96.5 The Fox, Bismarck Mandan's classic rock station with free beer, hot wings every weekday morning, and we are just a few weeks away from Rock the Prairie at Prairie Nights Casino. Friday, September 11th, Kicks and Vixen. Saturday, September 12th, Slaughter and Lynch Mob. And today, joined on the phone by Cher with Vixen. Cher, how are you? I'm excellent. Thank you, Matt. We are so excited to come out there and play. It's going to be a great show. Two full nights of, of 80s hair bands. It's going to be a couple of great shows. It's going to be incredible. You guys have an awesome uh, set of bands coming down. I hope everybody comes out with their spandex and their hair all sprayed up. I'm sure that they will. Now, before we talk about Vixen, as I was prepping the interview a little bit, I found out that you may actually be the, the hardest working woman in show business. Now, outside of playing with Vixen, you're in a, countless other bands playing bass with them. You're also a life coach, and you've published a book. You're a very busy lady. <laughs> to be bored, Matt. I, I, you know, yeah, that's, I'm a rock and roll life coach, and I and I and I just like to play a lot of music. Now, explain to me the the rock and roll life coach thing. What does that entail? Sure. Um, well, I, a lot of times I help people with uh, you know sort of standing out in their businesses, and 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 it sounds like it's all about the business, but it actually goes back to a lot of things in their personal lives as well. So it ends up being a lot of life coaching techniques, and it just sort of happened organically, and, and I love it. And I love seeing the results my clients get. It's absolutely amazing. And, of course, outside of being a life coach, you are a part of Vixen. The show in North Dakota going to kind of be a, a homecoming of sorts for you because you were born just a, a state away in Glencoe, Minnesota. How awesome is it for you to be able to come back <laughs> and play these uh, shows in the Midwest? I can't believe you know that. Um, it's really awesome. Yeah, my, my accent comes flying back as well. It's pretty funny. Now let's talk about Vixen a little bit. You actually joined the band in the late 80s. You replaced the original bassist. The band had started in Minnesota, then went to the West Coast. How did you get hooked up with Vixen? Just a series of, you know, good timing events. The guitar player, uh, Jan, the founder of the band, saw me playing in a different situation and came up to me and gave me her phone number on the back of a napkin, and I called her about a month later, just out of the blue, and I said, oh, yeah, we're actually looking for a bass player. So I went down and auditioned, and then about less than a year later, we had a record deal. And Vixen was really the only female band from the 80s that sold over a million records, had numerous number one videos on MTV, four singles on the Billboard Top 100. What do you think it was about Vixen that kind of set you apart from the, uh, the rest of the female groups and really the rest of the groups of the 80s? I have no idea, but I'm really grateful that it that it was there, whatever it was. What was your favorite part <laughs> about uh, about being a member of Vixen during the uh, the kind of the heyday in the '80s? I mean, you guys got to tour the world and play with some of the biggest acts in the world. What was your favorite part? What's your best memory? Um, I'd say probably the the best memory was the first time we went to Europe and played arenas. It was just so different and such a big deal to go to Europe and play over there. But overall, I'd say really the, my best memory is just always meeting the fans. Always, always, always. I've just always really enjoyed like meeting and talking to people. I think it's amazing to get to meet so many cool people who like rock and roll. And what's cool about Vixen, or I guess surprising maybe, is the fact that the band was really only together for four years with the record deal and everything that happened. I mean, you guys really kind of hit it big at the end of the late 80s in the early 90s, and then you broke up in 1991. What kind of led to that breakup? Uh, you know, it was a bunch of different things. Um, we had some issues with our management, and um, the record label had some issues with our management. And then, of course, the whole changing, you know, scenery of the music business itself, you know, the, the what was becoming popular and everything sort of drove us out. So, yeah, it was just like a lot of different things, really. And then, you know, you just sort of implode back in those days. There's a lot of egos and everything, mine included, so... Yeah, we kind of fell apart. Now, over the years, Vixen actually reunited, had a bunch of different lineups, and you were kind of only really a part of one reunion in 2004 and then the, the latest reunion. Why did it take so long for you to kind of agree to be a part of a, a full-blown reunion? Uh, well, I think for me, there was just always other things going on. Um, you know, I was always fronting my own band for a long time. And nowadays, being that we, you know, we mostly just hop on a plane and go out and play, so we can all still have, you know, our own lives doing our own things, and then go get to be in Vixen. It's not really like a full-time gig. And so that's, that's what really made it different, I think, for all of us at this point. Joined on the phone by Cher with the band Vixen. They will be a part of Rock the Prairie September 11th and 12th at the Prairie Nights Casino with Kicks and Lynch Mob. Now, back in 2012, Jan, the uh, group's founder, had kind of decided to get the band back together and start doing shows and touring. And then she was diagnosed with cancer and ultimately passed away what led you to to do what she wanted to do um well we had been talking with her for about a year prior to actually really reaching that decision and um and then when she was diagnosed with cancer and everything um it just felt like 
we started playing because we thought she was going to be coming back. So we had already just started doing a few gigs. And then, um, and then when she actually passed away, we were like, okay, well, the only right thing to do. By that time, we'd been talking to fans, and we knew that, you know, it would be stupid to just never play another gig. That just would have been horrible. It would have been like her dream dying or something. So that didn't feel right. So it really felt like the only right thing to do was to keep, keep playing. How difficult were those shows without Jen on stage with you, the first ones? Horrible. <laughs> Absolutely horrible. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I think there were moments on stage where we all had tears in our eyes. You know, just, oh, yeah, it was it was really rough. The first few were really, really rough. There are still times where, it, it you know, it hits all of us. Now, there's still a, a really huge fan base supporting bands like Vixen and Kicks and Lynch Mob and all these groups in the 80s. What is it about that time period, do you think, in music that keeps people coming to these shows and, and supporting bands when so many other genres and so many other bands have kind of fallen to the wayside? Well, I think that that genre of music just always sort of makes you feel like you're having a good time. You know, it's not about um, anything too serious or anything too heavy. It's It's like... It's like going to the, it's like I went and saw the new Mission Impossible movie the other day. It's the same thing. I'm just going there to have a good time. <laughs> you know, I just want to be entertained. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think that people really like that element. And, of course, you know, if they were there to begin with, the hairspray is still stuck in their hair, and they've got to come to see the band. Joined on the phone by Cher with the band Vixen. They will be a part of Rock the Prairie September 11th and 12th at the Prairie Nights Casino with Kicks and Lynch Mob and Slaughter. What can we expect, Cher, from the uh, from the show September 11th that you guys will play with uh, Kicks at Prairie Nights? It's going to rock your socks off. You better get ready to rev it up with us and all four bands, us, Kicks, Slaughter, and Lynch Mob. It's, that's a killer lineup. So you, you all better be there both nights. And there are tickets available, prairienights.com. You can actually buy tickets for both nights. Now, what does the, the future hold for Vixen Share? I mean, I know that you've got a ton of other stuff going on. What about for the band? Will there be new music? Are there going to be more tour dates? What's going to happen? Yeah, there will definitely be uh, more tour dates and new music as well. All of the above. What about outside of Vixen? I mean, I mentioned before in the interview that you're a very busy lady. What do you have on the horizon personally? Uh, let's see. Next thing coming out is there's a live DVD coming out with uh, Joe Elliott from Def Leppard. I play bass in his band, the Down and Out. And that live DVD is coming out this fall. I'm not sure when. Sometime in September or October, the live DVD is coming out of a tour we did last December in England. So um, that'll be popping out somewhere. And, uh, and then other than that... Uh, there'll be a new record from my band Bubble coming out this year too. So a, a lot of new stuff coming from uh, Cher and uh, some new stuff coming from Vixen as well. September 11th, Prairie Nights Casino with Kicks. Get your tickets, a show you do not want to miss. Rock the Prairie at Prairie Nights Casino. Cher, thank you so much. I can't wait for the show. Awesome. My pleasure, Matt. Thank you. We'll see you there.